In this video, I will show you how to prepare an amortization schedule, which is an application of the present value of an annuity. But before we get started, it's important to understand some terms, such as principal, which is the original amount of a loan, interest, the amount the lender charges, amortized loan, a loan in which the principal and interest are paid each period by making equal payments. Here I should highlight something. Loans have different payment schemes. Amortized loan is one of them. There are other types such as the uh, discount loan in which the borrower pays the principal and the interest at maturity. So the full amount at maturity. But this is not the topic of this video. This video is particularly about the amortized loan. And finally, the amortization schedule, which we will be doing today. It is a schedule that shows the annual interest expense, the reduction of principal each year, and the ending balance or remaining principal of an amortized loan. So let's get started with an exercise in which we can prepare an amortization schedule. The exercise says, you are borrowing $10,000 for three years at an 11% interest rate, prepare an amortization schedule. Now looking at this exercise, it says a loan of $10,000. So that must be our principal. And then 11% is our interest rate. The number of time periods is three years, but how much is the payment? To prepare an amortization schedule, we should get started by finding what is the amount we are paying. Payment means the same amount each period of time. To do so, we will use the present value of an annuity. If you're not familiar with the present value of an annuity, you can find a video in my channel on this topic. Now let's get started. So we will be using the equation of the present value of an annuity. Plug in the numbers. The present value annuity is our principal, which is the $10,000. And then payment is the missing value, 11%. This is our interest rate and raised to the power of 3. This is the number of time periods. Now on the right side of the equation, I can simplify the numbers and I will find them at 2.4437, but I still have payment as the missing value. To further simplify this equation, I will divide like so and I will get the value, which is the payment amount. 4092.155. This is a very important number for us, the payment, because we will be using this in the amortization schedule. Now I will take you step by step into preparing the amortization schedule, but before we do so, let's look at the parts of the schedule. It has the years. We have three years since uh, this is a three years loan. Beginning principal, annual payment, interest expense, principal reduction, and the remaining balance, or remaining principal, or sometimes we also call it the outstanding balance. So first, put the number of years and the annual payment, which we already found earlier. The annual payment is the same for all the years. Now to get started, we should, we should calculate the first interest based on the beginning principal. Our beginning principal is the $10,000, so I will multiply it by the 11%, and I will find the interest expense, which is $1,100. The next step will be calculating the amount available for reducing the principal. As you know, when you pay uh, the installments for your loan, the principal is not reduced by the amount that you pay, because the interest is deducted from the amount you pay. So simply, to get the uh, principal reduction, we should deduct the interest from the annual payment. So, 4092.155 minus the interest, which is 1100, and I will get the principal reduction, which is 2992.115. Once I get the reduction, I can calculate the remaining principal, or the outstanding value, which is, as you can guess it, it is uh, the beginning principal minus the principal reduction. So it's the 10,000 minus 2,992.115. 
and I will have the answer at 7,007.885. Very simple, but you have to practice it so not to get confused. Now let's move on. As you might notice, the, um, our beginning principle is the remaining principle. So the beginning principle is 7,007.885. Now I have to calculate the interest expense based on this number. So I will multiply the 7,007.885 times the 11% and I will get the interest expense, the new interest expense, which is 770.867. Now I can go on with calculating the amount available for reducing the principal. So I will deduct the interest from the annual payment. So 4092.115 minus 770.867. And the amount I will get is 3321.228. Now to find the remaining balance, I should deduct the principal reduction from the beginning principal, like so. And I will get the answer at 3,686.592. Now again, the remaining principle is our beginning principle. So I will calculate the interest based on the new beginning principle. Like so. So 3,686.592 multiplied by the 11%. So my interest expense is... 405.525 to calculate the amount available for reducing the principal again the annual payment minus the interest like so so I will get 3686.63 and finally calculating the remaining balance which is the beginning principal minus the principal reduction and I will get the answer and here I have minus 0 0.038, which is really, really minimal and close to zero. So I can round it to zero. And by doing so, um, the, uh, the loan has reached its maturity. Simple as that. So as you notice, these steps repeat themselves until we reach the maturity of the loan where we have uh, the remaining principal or the outstanding balance is zero or almost close to zero. Now, something you should pay attention to. You might ask yourself, how much in total did you actually pay for the 10,000 loan? Now, how much you paid is actually the summation of the annual payment. The annual payment here we have is the 4,092.155. So multiplying it by 3 or taking the summation of it, you have actually paid 12,276.465. This is the actual amount of your loan. Now another question you might ask is how much interest did you actually pay? Now to find this, you can either deduct um, the total amount of your payment minus the principal and you will get the answer which is 2276.465 or you might want to take the summation of the interest expense in this case it will give you something almost close to that which is 2276.392 so, thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you have requests, please also leave them. Thank you.